Hello. Welcome everybody who's joined. We're just going to wait for a few more, a few more participants to join. If you are watching this online, you can probably forward it a little bit to the beginning of the webinar. OK, it's now two minutes past, so we will begin our webinar. Um, so firstly, in terms of introduction, um, my name is uh, John Parrott. So I work for a company called ECF and I'll be facilitating uh, the, set, the webinar this evening. I'm going to ask my colleagues Liz, Aga and Richard to introduce themselves in that order, please. Hi everyone, my name's Liz Rhodes. I'm the Healthy Streets Public Relations Manager. Uh, okay. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Agnieszka Jezierska and I'm the project manager for this scheme. Thank you, Richard, over to you. Thanks. Um, yeah, good evening everyone. Thank you for coming along. My name's uh, Richard Eason and I'm the Healthy Streets Programme Director. Thank you team. Um, if you can see the slide that's on there, it just uh, lays out what um, will be covered tonight and who it's for for this um, business webinar and, and what it's not for. So um, we will be um, having to explain the project, introduce the proposals and explain the next steps and uh, opportunities for the officers here who've just introduced themselves um, to listen to questions and, and suggestions and provide some initial responses. And what we won't be doing is discussing specific issues relevant to particular um, residents or businesses um, will be obviously running a consultation later which will cover off or making decisions right now about the project implementation. So Aga, can I have the next slide please? And here is your agenda for tonight. I'm just going to cover off a, a bit of housekeeping at the, at, the, at the beginning. Here's obviously the agenda on the screen um, and then I'm going to pass to Richard to uh, talk about the background and case for this change which we're about to um, present to you. Uh, then Aga and Liz are going to give that presentation about that including the next steps and then it'll be back to me for you residents to and businesses to be able to ask questions via the, the question chat function in here um, which we will then uh, look at present and have a discussion on um, all being well wrapping up within the hour by seven o'clock so without further ado can we have the next slide please um Aga? So in terms of housekeeping, there is um, the question and answer function for people to ask questions um, that you'll see that at the top of your screen where there's a question mark over a speech bubble. So you can please ask that and those questions will come to us and we'll get to that at the end of the presentation. For those watching this online, you'll be able to submit questions to the project team at the email address, which is at the end of this presentation, healthystreets at enfield.gov.uk. Um, We'll be answering questions following the presentation, not stopping during the presentation. We'll flow through the presentation from start to finish. Following the webinar, we will update the FAQ section on the project page. That's the frequently asked questions based on tonight's questions that businesses and residents raise. Comments and suggestions received via the question and answer function will not be published. However, we will review all of them. If you have comments or suggestions, please post them separately to your questions. This webinar is being recorded and will be published, as I said, on the project page. Thank you. Next slide, please, Aga. So I'm now going to ask Richard to cover off the background case for change. Richard. Thanks, John. Um, OK, so it's probably helpful if we first of all give a bit of um, background to this particular uh, project. So I think um, work really um, along this this 
uh, the length of this road started back in, in 2015 when we conducted some community engagements um, on, on the wider scheme. Um, and then if we come forward to 2017, there were some high street improvements undertaken um, along along various uh, stretches of, of, of the projects. Um, and in, in 2020, um, we had the funding to complete the um, the northern parts of the of the eight and ten uh, project. So split into two halves, really. The the southern element um, a few years ago down to Edmonton Green, and the northern element um, from the Nags Head Junction upwards. Um, more recently, uh, completing in 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 twenty twenty. Um, so that left a. Uh, a um, um, a, a, a section of the high street that was that was untouched by either the schemes that I've mentioned or the South Street uh, Ponders End uh, scheme, um, and it's that section that we're looking to, um, to to move forward with now. And I think the team will go into a little bit more detail on that. Um, we have started um, some work on the bus stop borders, which started um, over the summer, although is is, is currently paused. Um, and um, what we're doing now prior to um, taking forward the, the, the future aspects of the project is um, is in, you know, it started to engage with businesses um, and, and residents um, to understand uh, any thoughts or ideas that they, they might have that might shape uh, the final design of, of the works that we want to do. Um, over the next um, several months, which will which will cover later on in the presentation. So that's a little bit of background in terms of where we've come from and what we're trying to do. Um, I'd say that Healthy Streets and this 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 project itself doesn't stand alone. So this project is part of a wider the, the wider Healthy Streets program, which is part of a longer term um, um, program to enable more people in the community to to walk and cycle. Uh, and indeed use public transport for some of their journeys. So um, within the context of a, of a climate emergency and a climate crisis that we're currently in and, and knowing that um, transportation is responsible for a huge amount of the borough's uh, emissions, um, we need to start taking um, some bold action now and continue to take the action that we've actually been taking for, for, for a little while um, to enable more people to move around in different ways that's not wholly dependent on, on the private motor car. Um, next slide, please. Um, what we're doing here in Enfield is being replicated um, all across uh, London and indeed the UK. So there is there's a whole series of of, of policies and, and and thoughts, if you like, at a series of different levels. So uh, Enfield Council has declared its own climate uh, emergency and is wanting to uh, bring forward initiatives that encourage more walking and cycling as a contribution as part of the response to that climate emergency, not not the whole response. Um, the, the, uh, at a London level, we have the Mayor's Transport Strategy, so that's a document that's looking out right through until 2040 and has been around for a couple of years now, but is also setting out the real necessity for, in order for um, London, just to keep functioning really for the for the roads and things to keep operating with the predicted growing population, even if you ignore um, the issues of climate change, then We've got to be able to encourage more people to move around in, in different ways and, and not everybody just just relying on the private motor car for all of their journeys. So local level, a London level and and you know um, and also a national level. So the Department for Transport is is guiding local authorities such as Enfield Council um, with real clear policy and direction now um, that we need to bring forward schemes that um, that encourage more more walking uh, and, and cycling and that's um, one of the aims and objectives of this particular project. Next slide, please. So just to give that a little bit of context, uh, and I don't know how clear this um, this this graph is. Hopefully, it's clear um, to to people uh, here this evening, um, and if you're sort of watching uh, later at your leisure um, online. But what this is showing is the overall increase in motor vehicle traffic that that we've been experiencing in Enfield, and you can see that uplift. Um, over the last sort of 10 years, uh, where the amount of annual motor vehicle miles has been just increasing effectively year on uh, year on year. Now, um, this this sort of ends sort of pre pandemic, and I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, with all the challenges that that, that, that many people have, have had to face, we'll, we'll have seen um, at least, you know, through lockdown and, and, and that period, a an overall, you know, a drop in, in motor vehicle traffic. But I think we're getting a sense now that, that 
that that, that demand is starting to, to go back to something like it was uh, previously. Um, and so it's this continued growth um, that is a that is a concern. The top black line showing all motor vehicles and and the blue line showing um, cars and, and, and taxis. Um, so that's growing motor traffic is one of the challenges. And if we move to the next slide, um, also something that we need to consider, uh, which is more prevalent to some projects more than others, is that that actually what this graph is showing is the type of roads where a lot of that traffic is on. So um, so A roads has re remained um, sort of largely consistent. That's the green line at the top. The yellow, the, sorry, the blue and the red line at the bottom are, are motorways and, and B roads. And what we're finding across the borough is that, that actually a lot of that increase in that traffic volume is being absorbed by some of our, our um, more smaller residential streets that have arguably not been designed for that for that type of purpose. Um, so what we'll be wanting to look to do is 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 measures whereby we help to sort of reassign that traffic back onto the onto the key roads. Um, the Hartford Road, the A1010 is obviously one of those key roads, and and we want to make sure that um, that that traffic that that um, his is reassigned back to those key roads that then people who are walking and cycling on those on those roads are also uh, protected um so that that increase in that traffic on those quieter residential streets over the last 10 years sort of broadly aligns with the introduction of of satellite navigation and and people having kit in their cars where they're just putting in a to b and it and it's telling them what it what it feels is, a, is the fastest route um so this Increase in volume of of, um, of motor traffic on often inappropriate roads is 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 part of what we want to tackle. Um, next slide, please. So the mayor's transport strategy. Uh, uh, this is a few snippets from that document, if you like, uh, and it's just articulating that there is a lot of journeys across London um, that could be could be walked or cycled. Not all of them, but but there's a lot that could. A lot of quite short journeys. Um, but it sort of makes the point that in order to encourage more people to be able to choose that alternative method, uh, we need streets that are safe and that are designed um, in a way that encourages more people to, to walk and cycle. So we've got to make those changes. We've got to redesign some of our streets uh, and encourage and inspire more people to give these alternative methods um, a, a go. Um, next slide, please. Um, just sort of relevant to more to um, some schools really, but uh, or to young people, but we've got, you know, only three in 10 children of school age um, are getting their rec daily recommended uh, activity levels. So again, um, if you set aside the sort of climate crisis, we also have an obesity crisis and particularly in, in, in Enfield uh, where our young people are not getting the type of levels of physical activity that they should. So enabling and encourage them to, um, introduce sort of more active forms of travel into their everyday lives is, is a really important way of, of setting them up for a more positive uh, healthy future you know through the rest of their life and the the air quality um, is something that we can improve in the longer term by by reducing the overall reuse of, of private motor vehicles um, next slide please so um so I, I mentioned that we're talking about one specific program project in, in Ponders End, but it's part of this wider program. Um, and it's through knitting together, if you like, all the various components of the Healthy Streets program, which is sort of illustrated on this slide, um, by delivering all of those different elements that, that collectively over time we can we can generate the change that we're that, that we're seeking to make. Next slide, please. So, um, you know, the um, Healthy Streets program is is really working towards um, increasing these what we call Healthy Streets indicators. So there is there's a mechanism by which we can uh, examine a, a street or a place and, and make a judgment as to how much of a healthy street that particular place is. Um, and these indicators, I, I, I won't go through them all, but you can see that if we can improve these things, so if the if the air is clean, if it is easy to cross, if, if if people are sort of able to choose to walk and cycle and it isn't too noisy and there's things to see and do, a general feeling of relaxation, you can see how by improving the, the, the score on each of these categories, by um, making some changes to the design of, this, of the place, um, 
we can make some overall improvements for, for the communities and, and the people who live um, on these streets. Um, so they're the healthy streets indicators that, that underpin uh, a lot of our thinking of, of, of the changes that we might be proposing. Um, next slide, please. OK, I think that's um, my cue to, to hand over to uh, Aga. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So I will briefly talk through the IMS and overview of the proposals that you hopefully have also received uh, in the letter sent to yourselves. So the uh, sort of IMS and, propo and proposals uh, include sort of upgrading, obviously, uh, uh, that section of 8 and 10, that section of High Street, uh, which is uh, between Southbury Road, Naxhead, Junction and the Ponders and Park. So on the next slide, uh, I, I will sort of show that area. There is an overview so I can talk around that. Uh, also, like uh, we've mentioned earlier, a very important uh, sort of experience for all users, not just sort of uh, the, the drivers that primarily so far um, sort of uh, th there was a concentration to sort of deliver for for cars. So obviously, the problem, uh, as mentioned earlier by Richard, is sort of recognised. There's obviously growing population, people that rely on cars a lot, and sort of uh, pedestrians really provisions and, and cyclists sort of provisions really need to be improved to then enable and encourage people to sort of uh, shift and, and make that transition, which is which is as we have seen on previous slides, really necessary to sort of uh, improving, but also maintaining, uh, like like we've said earlier, um, that that provision. Um, uh, we will also be including sort of resurfacing uh, of, of the carriageway. Uh, that sort of um, helps with the overall feel and look. There's going to be lots of changes. So resurfacing sort of not only will help tackle the existing issues, but also will help sort of deliver a, a, a nice sort of quality uh, product that will then again encourage sort of walking, walking down or cycling uh, down this uh, section of road. Uh, we will be also implementing cycle facilities. Um, so that's going to be a mixture of sort of cycle lanes and cycle um, trucks. Uh, so uh, as you may be aware, there is a sort of a, C a C1 uh, route running uh, or designated around uh, that sort of section of road. So some of it has been already implemented and, and like we mentioned earlier, uh, that section hasn't been uh, implemented as yet, which, which is why we're delivering now to sort of uh, bridge, bridge, that, uh, bridge that gap, if you like, between northern and southern section. We are also sort of thinking of implementing 20 mile per hour speed limit. Uh, again, I will show on the next slide the extent of the scheme, but it's being considered to extend it slightly beyond to the south of the scheme. So sort of to capture also the changes that have been implemented recently it makes sense as this project is implemented to cover cover that southern section uh, as well. And that should help sort of providing that safer environment for all the users. So for the cyclists that will be using uh, the, the facilities for pedestrians as well. And uh, changes to parking and loading, as we also mentioned in the letter, uh, they sort of are in a way a consequence and they are a sort of a, a necessary part of the changes that will enable us to implement the cycle facilities. Uh, and we are therefore engaging with, with businesses to um, to gather that feedback to ensure that you are able to uh, inform those changes, those decision making, so that when those parking and loading revision provision is being uh, um, reviewed, uh, we have as much input from yourselves uh, as, as possible. So the slide that I mentioned just just now sort of shows the extent of extent of the scheme. So uh, to the north is the South uh, Southbury Road Naxhead uh, Junction with Tesco to the left, uh, which I'm sure most of you will be already aware of with the area, um, and also Ponders and uh, Park with the courtesy crossing uh, at, at the moment uh, just to the south of the bus stop. So this is the extent of of that particular scheme. However, like I mentioned, the 20 mile per hour speed limit we're looking sort of to in to extend that beyond beyond that scheme and to cover um, sort of area to the to the south. Uh, and in terms of the proposed changes, um, 
Uh, the four bus stops that are currently within the within the scheme area, they are being upgraded. Two of them you would have seen uh, the work sort of commenced and was paused. We hope to come back sort of uh, soon uh, to finish uh, those bus stops. Uh, and also there are two courtesy crossing at the moment uh, at sort of each end, if you like, of, of this project. And we're looking to uh, convert them and upgrade them to zebra crossings. Uh, the existing sort of signalized crossing that is at the moment to the north of the uh, of Queensway that is planned to remain. And there is a small courtesy crossing just to the south of it. So sort of reviewing that provision uh, and with the upgrade of the two courtesy crossing, uh, it was decided that this one will be uh, removed. Um, and the blue line sort of uh, represents cycle facilities. So just to explain by, by cycle facility, we mean a mixture of uh, cycle lanes, cycle tracks uh, on that cycle route, if you like. They, they might be just sometimes uh, a confusion uh, around what those are. So at the moment we are again still sort of finalizing that. That's why we've sort of set facility not, not to sort of uh, uh, con confuse. Uh, and obviously as, as the designs are finalized, we obviously will be presenting designs and, and explain exactly what is being proposed where. And also cycle facilities uh, uh, such as cycle uh, parking. There are some uh, cycle hoops as well available, uh, already implemented uh, along the high street. So this is something we are also uh, looking at uh, along along the uh, cycle sort of lanes and tr and tracks. Uh, and the 20 mile per hour, as, as I mentioned. Um, so you would have received also in the letter the uh, sort of uh, frequently asked uh, a section uh, that explains a little bit more uh, what is parking, what is loading, uh, you know, what, what the road markings uh, mean. Um, so when when do we think about parking? When do we think about loading? So the letter explains in more details uh, what is meant by loading and what is meant by parking. Again, if if uh, if you have any questions to us, please feel free to contact us at the email like uh, John mentioned earlier, uh, pro provided at the end of this presentation, healthystreets at enfield.gov.uk. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, and we sort of ask that you provide, uh, you sort of re read that letter and provide your feedback. Uh, so it's a snippet again of, of that uh, engagement questionnaire that was uh, sent out to all the businesses along High Street, where we sort of ask to provide, ask you to provide as much information as possible. So when you getting the deliveries, what type of delivery so that we can understand, we can understand a, a bit better the requirements. And then if you can uh, provide, we ask you to provide uh, the response to us by 30th of September, as mentioned in the letter. However, obviously, any questions you might have, you just feel free to to send them anytime. And we do really strongly encourage uh, that you you provide that information because we do really sort of take on board all the comments uh, and consider them all. So I will just hand over uh, to Liz briefly to cover communication and engagement. Thanks, Aga. So this is the project page that I think everyone here will be familiar with. Um, so this is the main source of information on the project. Um, you can see there we have some frequently asked questions as well as important documents um, and more information on um, any upcoming engagement and consultation opportunities will also be published um, on this page, such as surveys. Um, the business loading survey is on there currently and you can also subscribe to updates. Thanks, next slide. So um, in terms of things that we have, have done so far in terms of engaging the local community, we've um, been engaging with emergency services on the design of the scheme. Uh, we've met with the mosque and also a number of other stakeholders in the area. Um, we work closely with ward councillors and have run some briefings with them, sent out letters to residents, businesses, other community groups in the area. Um, and like I said, we're in contact with the mosque. Um, so they will continue to be delivered to, to residents and businesses in the area for anything um, important on the project coming up. 
there's the project page uh, and obviously we've got this webinar tonight for businesses and we'll also be running a community webinar tonight at 7 p.m. as well. Thank you. So in terms of future activities, like I said, the project page is the main source of information and we will post updates onto that page. Um, so I do encourage you to subscribe there and, and keep checking there for any updates. Um, we will be sharing the updated design option on the project page under document library. Um, we'll be sending out a notification letter about the statutory consultation. Like I said, that will be um, also hosted on the project page and there'll be a construction notification letter subject to approvals that go out to residents and businesses in the area as well. So I'll pass back to Richard for mm -hmm. next steps. Sorry to add. Yeah, I will cover those. Sorry. Thank you. That's okay. Um, so in terms of the next step, as we sort of briefly touched on them throughout the presentation, so uh, now throughout September, sort of we uh, we are running this engagement. We're going to be analyzing the, the feedback. There's going to be a world forum which is being arranged. Um, uh, and th this project is hoped to be covered as well. We are planning to uh, undertake some surveys next week as well, traffic and pedestrian surveys. Uh, the next step will be once we sort of gathered all the feedback, once we have all the data, uh, then we will uh, sort of produce the designs and then we will uh, carry out say road safety audit and uh, EQIA, EQIA, which is equality sort of impact assessment. So obviously the project has been uh, sort of undertaken with, with that in mind throughout. And these, these documents sort of are produced and, and published on our website as well. And once that's, that's sort of completed and we happy with the designs, having all the sort of checks and, and engagement obviously taking place uh, we will then sort of we call it like a sort of informally design free so at this stage we're happy we've taken all the comments on board and then we will then obviously um, advertise there's going to be statutory consultation so all the designs will be detailed and 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 uh, published and sent obviously notification now we say to to the community to all the stakeholders and uh, that's planned for sort of early 2020, subject to obviously how the design uh, development and, and sort of fin finalizing uh, is, is going. And then uh, subject again to the consultation that is, is, will, that is, being, is being planned, then the works will uh, commence in, in spring 2022. Uh, and then we uh, again subject to to sort of uh, the details of the designs, uh, what will be included, whether we are implementing 20 mile per hour speed limit or not, and what exactly facilities will be there. Uh, then the, com the completion of the works will be around spring or sort of summer next year. So that's in terms of that's it in terms of next steps, and I'll pass. Uh, the uh, pass, pass it on to John. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard, Liz and Aga for that presentation. Hopefully those uh, watching tonight and those uh, who, who are going to be viewing this uh, at a later date online found that sort of useful and informative uh, presentation. So we'll now come to the question and answer session on the back of the presentation. Um, I'm just looking in our chat to see if we actually have any questions uh, yet. I can't see any at the moment, but I'll give some time for people to submit their questions. As this slide says, you can use the Q&A function to ask them. Um, and then obviously there's some guidelines there about how to ask questions, which I won't read out hopefully viewers can see for themselves. I would add that for those businesses that are viewing this online um, later than, than, on, than tonight, if you want to submit any comments or questions for the project to consider as part of this engagement session for them to be factored in for the next step as Ag has just outlined there, then um, you need to do that. I would encourage you to do so by the 30th of September. Beyond that, you are, of course, um, 
you know, very welcome to 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 submit uh, any questions or any comments or any feedback to the project team at any time. But if you want it to be considered and for this particular stage as per that timeline, then please aim to do so by the 30th of September and the project team will pick it up. The address for doing so is on the slide after this. Perhaps now's the time while we're waiting for any questions to come in to put that up. So there again is the project page as you can sort of see and uh, you know follow Liz's point about sort of subscribe Describing, going on to there, having a look. The information is on there that's been covered tonight about what to do. And then any questions, as I said, can be submitted to that email address, healthy streets, all one word, at enfield.gov.uk. Just looking to see if we've received any questions tonight, and it appears that there aren't any as yet. Just give it another moment, team. And if there aren't any questions, so far and if people participation tonight also uh, haven't slept on what they've uh, seen here want to submit any questions then again please do so by the um the, the by, by submitting it to that email address again so at that point then if there's no no questions to be submitted as part of this live webinar team I'll, uh, I'll 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 draw the the webinar to an end um with this as i say this will be uploaded obviously people can see it see it online for those who weren't able to participate tonight and it will be loaded onto there but thank you for those thank you to the team for giving the presentation from 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 the council and uh, thank you for for participants okay thank you very much <laughs>